what do you think? Money grows on trees? I'm like, hey, yeah, money does grow on trees with Money Mike, you know? First, I needed to understand exactly about your uh, book series, the Money Mike and the Gang book series. How did you people come to this? How did you people come to thinking about financial education for children and in the process some education financial education also for their parents over to you well that's a short question with a really long answer <laughs> um, that's yeah. why i asked so that you people both can no problem we can I'm make, make a long it. story short angela and i were married over 24 years ago um, we got into some various, very bad financial problems, had to commit bankruptcy, lost everything we had, uh, lost our cars, lost our place to live, uh, had to move into our parents' basement because we had nothing. We couldn't even buy diapers for our baby. Um, and most of the time when people come out of bankruptcy, they come out even, they don't have any debt. I still had IRS bills and student loan bills. So I was still even underwater after coming out of bankruptcy. So. Through that whole process, Ams and I were divorced. Um, fast forward a year or two years later, we were remarried, started a business, and just decided, you know what? The last time we did this, we didn't do it right. So we decided we're gonna learn how to handle our money right. We're gonna listen to what our parents were teaching us about investing. Uh, we also hooked up with the ministry, Prep with all our ministries down in Atlanta, because I said, I want somebody who teaches biblical foundation on finances as well too. I just don't want to know just what a financial advisor has. I want to know what God has to say about it as well too. And I think you have to have, you know, a combination of those two because, you know, we have to live in the world regardless. I mean, how, it doesn't matter how religious you are, you still need to live in the world. You still need to have money. You still need to have all the things. So you can't be so religious that say money doesn't matter because it does. So through that process of getting ourselves educated and starting to apply those principles to our life, we started to prosper. And we continued to increase every year and kept getting better and better. Our business was doing better. We started our own 501c ministry. Um, we're just, you know, basically living our dream pretty much. And then we got plugged into, um, through our ministry, into some uh, local church in Southern California. And we started teaching 10 week financial courses. And so the, thing that I had to do was put together a whole curriculum to teach people over 10 weeks. So once that was established, we saw great success with the people, people getting completely out of debt in 10 weeks, people having financial breakthroughs, people having getting promotions in their work, people yeah. starting new businesses. Yeah. You know, you just start seeing the fruit that people have yeah. from applying these basic principles to their lives. And so, you know, as we thought about that, one of the things that I think really hindered us from starting off right is we never had any education as a kid of finances. I mean, I went all the way to seven and a half years of college and had economics and all those different business classes. Not once did I ever hear about budgeting, reconciling a checkbook or any of the basic things that you really need to know about handling money. We just don't teach it. At they least. hand you credit cards right out of college and they say, here, you figure it out, but go into debt, try and figure it out. Yeah, that was how I started my first day of college was a student loan to pay for my education first. And then I went to the bookstore to get my books and I got a credit card application. So I got a student credit card. Next thing you know, it's racked up and you're just following kind of the kind of some of the worldly perspectives of getting into debt, you know, using debt to leverage to get things. And I grew up in a household where, you know, the cars are financed, the house is financed, the washing machines, fine, everything, <laughs> everything's <laughs> Finance, you know? precious finance. <laughs> so we had a heart to really start to let's start these principles early. Let's establish these early in kids' lives. And I think, you know, these days or any days, really, you can't put all that responsibility on the school or on the education system. So as parents, we felt it was responsible, you know, to, you have to step up in order to do that. And that's one thing that we did with our daughter is at eight years old, we made her a employee of one of our corporations and she started paying income taxes and giving and tithing and investing at eight years old yeah. and you know she's now 24 and has seen tremendous growth is very successful 
So we tried to apply not only the things that we learned, but also our own life uh, experience as well too. And I know sometimes, you know, when I was in college, I used to have a professor would teach me something on the subject and they had book smart, but they had no experience at all in it. For example, uh, you know, a business teacher teaching you about how to start a business and they'd learned that through that book, but they've never started a business one time. And so we really took our experience and the knowledge that we received and combined that into teaching these people. And then, you know, I had the idea of writing this book series and just really never made the time to do it. And Angela kept saying, when are you gonna write those books? When are you gonna write those books? I was like, how am I supposed to have time? We're running the company, we got family, we got our ministry, we got all these things going on, you know, excuses, excuses, excuses. And then one day COVID-19 hit and shut down everything. <laughs> and you know, our business went silent. There's nobody was emailing, nobody was calling. There's nothing going on. And, now, I remember that first day, like it was yesterday, we were out on a walk the first day when everything was locked down. And she looked at me and said, so when are you gonna write those books? And I had no excuse and that's when we started the whole Money Mike and the Gang series and launching the whole thing. Right, right. Angela? <laughs> yeah, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, it's a really long answer to a very short question. Uh, but you, right. said some, you said something interesting. He said, taking what our parents have, have taught us and applying those principles. And isn't that just a thing? It's just sometimes we just don't listen to our parents and we have to learn things the hard way. But I think if we had learned these principles as children and they were like seeds that over time it became automatic and just grew supernaturally, which that's what this kind of is. These are, these are like planting seeds in children so that they, blossom into these huge, you know, massive oak trees, for lack of a better term, of just growing and flourishing. And that's what money is easy as about. That's why I designed it as the tree. So it's tie, save, invest, give with the simple principle. That's the first book. And earlier one, that was the second book. Yes. Money is easy as the first book. Giving is easy as the second book. The principles of the tree remains, right? So once you plant these seeds, you'll continue to produce a harvest in your life supernaturally. You will just be led to do making right choices, being filled with wisdom, attracting those uh, people in your life that will help you. And that's just, you know, what our series is designed is to plant those seeds into children so that they can become a blessing to their children's children for generations right. to come, you know? Right, right. Well, that's a really good, good point that she made was, you know, doing it while they're early. Cause when kids are young, they're a lot more pliable. They want to copy their parents. They want to do everything their parents. They want to talk to their parents. Once they start getting a little bit older, like 10, 11, then it's like, they don't want nothing to do with their parents. And they don't want to listen to me thinking Teenagers, everything. Right? That's when my parents really tried to start teaching me about investing. I was already in my late twenties, you know, twenties, thirties, whatever, yeah. too, too late. And you know, I already think I know it all too. I'm not going to listen to them. What do they know? You know, so you can kind of come against that whole issue by starting the kids early. So when earlier you started uh, with these fun sessions with the parents and then they started getting their children, am I right? Yeah, people were, I mean, basically it was the classes were open obviously to adults. We didn't really have an age limit. But what happened is when people started having success and people in the group started sharing their testimonies and people were like, I want to bring my kids. Can I bring my kids? It's yeah. like. Yeah, of course, bring your kids. So we started seeing a lot of teenagers coming into the classes after that. And the great thing about when he was teaching those 10 week financial courses, I mean, he spent a lot of time putting custom curriculum together for each student and every class was di different. But in with these books, he basically wrapped that curriculum around, like we wrapped the brand around the curriculum that he had already put out and made it really super easy for kids and for parents to understand, to follow. Um, you know, we have like, I'll just show you a couple things, little asterisks on the words. And then it has like uh, vocabulary and then scripture references that you can go to the back of the book and look those up. So, you know, we wanted to make it a tool, you know, instead of it just being a, a book that you read, which is great, but like here in the back of the book, there's like the the term, getting kids uh, familiar with financial vocabulary and then the scripture that backs it up. 
So we wanted to make it comprehensive and uh, as a tool for like parents and teachers and youth pastors. And so you're not just, you know, reading some big fun thing, yay, and then you put it away. No, it's, it's study time for moms and dads with their kids and getting familiar and making it come alive. And like we said earlier, just planting that seed on the inside. Right, right. Would people have a tendency to buy books and put it away? This happens many a times. You just right. forget about it. And it is more so with good ideas. But <laughs> in your case, yeah, that's what the point is. That in your case, you stuck to the good idea. That when you found that it was getting interesting for parents to get their kids to those sessions, you then, both of you, who went through their own problems, started thinking of something good, something for the future, and for an area which you had never ventured before. And you know, it is a difficult thought at that point in time. I must tell you that is very inspiring because you see, uh, uh, Charles, you came, you were earlier on building and running night clubs. And then all that things happened about bankruptcy and all those financial problems. And one thing that I liked about your, when I was reading about uh, details about yours, Angela, you did not mention, oh, my husband went bankrupt or it, it was about we bankrupt, uh, went bankrupt. And <laughs> no, this is a very important thing. You see, every relationship, when things are nice, it's like everybody's there to take that credit. It happens in several cases. But when problems are there, people tend to put it on the other person. And when I did not see that, you may be personally, you can always uh, have that, you know, that different fight that, listen, it was you took this wrong decision or you do. That's a different thing. But when you put up that brave face in front of the world, that also speaks about the amount of uh, commitment you have and the trust that you have on each other. Behind the back and, 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 and uh, within in personal uh, uh, quarters, that's it. Uh, when you have different discussions, that's a different story. So that was one part of it. Now coming to the idea part of it, you know, that people tend, you have so many ideas, big people who are actually about to start businesses uh, and they write so many ideas and at the end, after they just tear off that paper with 30 ideas. They never come down to implementing you. So the whole point is that what was it that you went down to you know, actually implementing that idea. And you see, it's about children's book, about the format, about what would be the illustration, who will do the illustration. You know, it takes a huge amount of uh, commitment as well as constant thinking about bringing about a product, not purely from a market point of view, but purely from a value point of view. That how children will start getting that knowledge as well as their parents also will find that book useful enough for them to gain knowledge from. So I want to understand that particular uh, insight from both of you, how exactly this idea led to at least these two books out of the four book series, if I understand, have led to this particular day and you are best best selling authors now. That's how I see it. Uh, well, we thank you for your compliments because uh, we've been through a lot. I mean, we were married, we were divorced to each other and we remarried each other. So that was a lot of, and that's a whole other teaching, right? <laughs> how to make a marriage work, learning how to communicate. Like you were just saying, trusting one another in their process. Like you had said before, we have special gifts and talents. He shines in one area, I shine in one area. We. When together we're, we're a team and that's how you operate moving forward but highlighting those excellent features so that you can thrive in business together i think that's one thing that you're good at is just letting me take the ball and run with it well that takes a lot of time i think in a relationship developing <laughs> the understanding of that you know they have the old saying opposites attract these are opposites right here. I mean, these are complete opposite sides of the spectrum. And somehow we came together, we were attracted, got Ross together. And 
But the great thing about that is that Angela has completely different skills and talents than I have. I'm very logical, Angela's very creative. So when we can bridge those two together, you know, we have some very successful things. Um, you've had a real estate business for going on 24 years, our ministry 16 years, multiple other things. Our daughter's a professional athlete. You know, and it, like you were talking about how much it takes just to put a book together, you know, how much it takes to put a business together. All the people that you need, I mean, you think for a book, just an author or maybe somebody posts, all the social media people, your attorneys, your accountants, you know, all these different aspects of the same thing with our daughter. You think, oh, she's a professional athlete, she can just go do her thing. There's an entire team behind her to support her to do her thing. So you really need, you know, a group of people to make something successful. And that was something that worked with us is being able to not get upset by the thing because they squeeze the toothpaste a different way that you do, or they put the toilet paper on a different way. And sometimes I think people can get so bent out of shape on those little things that they focus on the little things instead of focusing on the big things that really complement a relationship. So I think just being positive, you know, in that aspect, whether it's in a relationship or whether it's in your business as well, too, because any startup of any business is going to take a lot of diligence. It's going to take a lot of faith. It's going to take a lot of, you know, believing in yourself. And some days are easier than other days, but I think you just have to get up each day and just pull up your boots and go to work and you can't ever give up you just keep going and going and I think that's why a lot of people don't become successful with certain things because they run into opposition when they hit that wall of opposition and they just throw their hands up in the air and I always have taught my daughter you know any type of challenge that you have is just an opportunity to make yourself stronger and better even if you make a mistake you know you can learn from that mistake just don't make that same mistake again well and like you were saying it's your diligence, absolutely. But seeing it as an opportunity, seeing your walls and your troubles as opportunities to excel, using them as stepping stones of getting to bigger and better places. But first and foremost, just, you know, praying for wisdom <laughs> to, for the right path because we have so much at our disposal. I mean, social media is just so nuts. I mean, you just turn your phone on, right? You can get so easily distracted and go down a rabbit hole before you know it, half the day is gone because you're looking at TikTok, you know? Um, but even though you need to stay up on those kinds of things, you do have to have a grounding where you come back and you got to put the work in and the time in and having either mentors or a confidant or a teachers or someone that you could get some good feedback, someone that you trust, whether it's a friend or, you know, whoever that person is in your life, if it's even a group, maybe there's a group chat on Facebook or something that like-minded people can, you know, learn and glean from each other. I mean, I've been through all of it, every single one of it, you know, just to be successful, I think you have to, to reach for not only someone who's above you, but then also being able to be mentoring people that are just starting out as well and helping them because what i have found is that when you when you help people and you take on that like coach role you actually learn more about yourself in the process which makes you actually a better business person in what you're doing so that's part one the second part is well how did you get to where you are now which is a lot of the same thing just keep doing it you discover the right people you go to industry sites you find out who's doing the best illustrated pages you hire that person you just work it you just work your in getting your pieces into place and publishing in itself and not all the different mediums and what's going to be right there's a lot of research that goes into it because our cookie cutter approach might not be the same for someone else i mean they might go to a traditional publisher that you know and that's a whole other different thing or they could do it on their own if they're going to self-publish they need to understand the amount of money that goes into being a self-publisher and having like our ministry is our as a publisher for the children's books but all at the same time applying the principles of tithe save invest give in order to have that surplus where you can then start your business because what you don't want to do is go into debt trying to make something happen and then it doesn't happen and that's you know that's where a lot of people fail also is is okay. doing which is what you don't want to do now talk, let's now talk about the book itself money mike uh, it, it tells children about the importance of money and then you uh, you talk about three simple steps of how to manage it in a nutshell if you can tell that so that people will know 
what exactly this book is all about how what are these three steps for children uh, to manage their money okay so yeah three simple steps right so you've got your four principles tithe save invest give but then your three simple steps are like tithing or giving to your local church or to uh, your cause or whatever that is um, we find which is the second book giving is easy that when you give it opens up a supernatural response of providing back to you like the pressed down shaking together and overflowing shall men give to your bosom with the same measure you meet it shall be back measured back onto you luke 6 38. so the first principle step one is to give and then we just talk about when you give the increase that comes right because there's a, a gift that will come to that step two is paying cash for things not overextending or going into debt right is what we had talked about and step three would be to invest you want to make sure that you're investing into others you're investing either into like we had talked about the regular things of the market um, there's natural things that govern increase and then there's supernatural things that govern increase those are the basically the three simple steps okay and when those books are going to the children how are parents learning out of it uh, are they really learning so many of them are already into you know financial uh, field uh, how are they understanding these things what is their response just want to understand uh, is the education financial education of their parents along with the children uh, how how much is it working i'm sure it is working but just want to understand from you people yeah, I think the one of the important things to understand is that to be able to share this with your kids, you don't have to know anything about finances. We've really made this as a tool for the parent to be able to connect with the kid. It's like Angela said earlier, it's not about just giving the kid a book and say, go in your bedroom and read this and go to sleep. It's something for them to connect together, to read together, so that the parent can then use you know the glossary of terms to help to educate not only their child but themselves. And also the scriptures as well too so we made that as a tool for the parent to basically become a teacher one thing i always say about this is that no matter how financially experienced or knowledgeable you are through these books these kids you'll still learn something because that was something right. that i found out and when we were teaching our 10-week financial courses that we had financial investors a couple times that were in the classes like What's a financial investor doing in here? What can I possibly teach a guy who that's his profession? That's his expertise. He basically manages people's wealth and he's here to learn something from me. And every single time, those two people, both times in two different classes, had a lot of input and a lot of questions. And they both always thanked me for how much that they learned. I was just like, well, I'm glad you could teach me, but they still had breakthrough as well too. So, you know, I think that you know, you can't ever become too prideful in anything that you do and think, I'm there, I already know everything, I'm the best or whatever. You can still learn, you can still get better. Um, but, you know, I think going back to is that, you know, it's a tool for parents to use to connect with the children, to teach them and to learn themselves. Right, right. And about the title of the book, you know, it's an interesting title, Money, Mike and the Gang. How did you come to that? And, you know, uh, then you actually went for it and now and it has become a best set. Yeah, just, you know, through um, just praying, I just saw these images. I had, you know, the idea, I feel like God really downloaded the entire idea onto me. And then he added these images of these characters as well, too. And so one thing that we always used to hear in the teaching financial courses is that, oh my gosh, it's so hard to invest and it's so hard to budget and it's Da, da, da. You know, everybody was saying how hard it was. And that really stuck in my mind. So, you know, one thing I was trying to tell people, you got to change your mind. You got to change the way you think about things. If you think something is so hard and you can't do it, you're probably not going to be able to do it. But if you change the way you think and think that it's easy, if you just apply some of the basic principles of budgeting, it really is easy. And a lot of people look at budgeting as it's restrictive and it's not going to allow me to do these things and I can't spend my money. They look at it very negative where actually what budgeting does is that lets you see where every single dollar that you're spending, where it is going. And when you know where your money is going and you know where you're going to be at the end of the month, it's actually very free. It's very liberating. So it's the exact opposite of what people think. 
So the reason why we wanted to call the first book Money is Easy was because we kept exactly. hearing money is hard. So we want to teach kids right from the beginning, hey, money's easy. You know, it's easy to handle money. It's easy to give. It's easy to do that. So it's like we were talking about earlier, starting them early. And you got to mold those minds. you got to put that knowledge in there the right way, not the wrong way. And then the second book is Giving is Easy. So uh, what is yeah, it? You easy. earn money and then they should also know how to give money. Sure. Or right, right that's correct. So you're kind of asking earlier about, you know, kind of four basic principles of handling money. First of all, just learning the basic principles of money in and of itself and handling money. Second step is giving. And then the third step is saving. And then the last one is to stay out of debt, you know, how to handle your money. So, you know, I, I had these images of each character. So Money Mike was the money tree. You know, I used to always hear the thing, you know, you ask your parents, hey, you can have some money for this. What do you think? Money grows on trees? <laughs> like, hey, yeah, money does grow on trees with Money Mike, you know, the exact opposite. And then for giving grace, she's a present. And, you know, anybody can receive a present, whether it's a Christmas present or whatever. And that's about giving. Somebody has to give you that present. And kids really need to be how to talk, how to give. I mean, any child, you know, yeah. no matter how young they may be, you can even see toddlers or babies that can't even talk yet. Hardly, but when they have something that's theirs and somebody wants to take it away, it's mine, it's mine. You know, they don't have to be taught. They don't want to give it up. So you have to be taught how to give. Your people are already know how to hold on to and just keep it to myself, but they have to be able to taught how to give. So we teach some basic principles of how to give your money, but just not giving you money, how to give your time. We even have some illustrations on how to give blood, you know, how to give as far as helping people. And then Saving Sam is then the pig. He's the piggy bank that you can see through. Saving Sam teaches you how to save like emergency savings, how to save uh, for short-term investments, long-term investments. So it's a whole, uh, you know, basically um, a principle as far as not only just saving in itself, but the different uh, categories that you need to save in as well too. And then the last one is after you learn how to handle your money, how to give your money, how to save your money. Next one is, how to stay out of debt. And for us, you know, when we're in the nightclub business, even though we we're making a lot of money, we went into tremendous debt because you just think the money really doesn't end and you can leverage it, you can finance it. And that's one of the quickest ways to get in trouble, uh, especially if you're if you're do, using credit to buy things that are not an asset, you know, clothes, TVs, that type of stuff. If you're leveraging to do that, you're probably gonna get in trouble, especially if they're on credit cards. I mean, credit cards nowadays, 25, 30%. You know, so it's just a, it's a no win game for that. So each character and with, with the last one, stay out of debt, we have a loan shark. That was the image. So the shark is like trying to attack the kids, trying to convince them to get out of debt. So he's like the yeah, bad guy yeah. of that as well too. So very interesting. How do, how can people get to uh, get this book? Can they buy online? Amazon. <laughs> Where else? Amazon. <laughs> they, they can also go to our website, Todd Worldwide. .org, and then that has uh, the, the different descriptions of Money Mike. You can then click from there and go to the Money Mike in the Gang website. It, you know, pretty much everything that we have is on our toddworldwide.org website. Great, great. It's nice talking to uh, you both, Angela and Charles, because uh, I really like the thought about, you know, putting those ideas, really understand child psychology, how, and you have really made money simple where money is not you know money is not a, he's a hard thing to understand where money is easy to understand and also being uh, having gratitude uh, for the things that you have got in life so giving should also be easy and that's why you have named it as giving is easy with this thought in my mind it's a wrap on this very special edition of the kj masterclass life thank you so much for joining us. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us, AJ. So Appreciate much. it.